Hello, this is Reza Arad from Radicad. In this video, I'm going to talk about M scripting, the Power Query formula language, what it is, how it can be helpful uh, for you if you are using Power BI or if you are using Microsoft Fabric. This is the tra data transformation technology we use uh, and the M is the language for that. Let's talk about some of the basics of this language in this video. Uh, so when you are building a data analytics solution, um, part of your solution is to integrate data, do the data transformation, data preparation, bring that data from whatever source it is into uh, your data warehouse or sometimes directly into Power BI uh, and then start analyzing it. Through this process, sometimes you transform the data and there are different technologies to do data transformation. One of them is called Power Query, which you can use it directly inside Power BI in Power BI Desktop or in Power BI Service using a technology called Dataflow. Or if you are using Microsoft Fabric, you, um, you can use the same Dataflow technology, which is called Dataflow Gen 2. Uh, now, this video is not about uh, any of those. I have explained Power Query in, um, in separate video, explained about data flow, Gen 1, Gen 2 in separate videos as well. This video is about the scripting language behind that data flow, uh, what it is, uh, some of the basics and principles of learning that. So let's go into my screen and I'll show you uh, how this uh, setup is. I'm going to switch to my screen now. Okay, so as you see in my screen, I have a Power BI desktop window. Um, the M scripting is part of Power Query, so I'll go to the transform data, um, which opens the Power Query editor window for me. This is the place that I can go and start uh, looking at the data transformation. Now, at the moment, I don't have any data sources or any transformations available. I'll just bring a sample data source just to show you what this looks like in terms of transformation. Then we'll go and talk about uh, the M scripting language behind the scene. So in Power Query um, Editor, no matter Power BI Desktop or in Power BI Service, when you connect to a data source, when you get data from it, even if you don't do a data transformation behind the scene, still some kind of transformation is happening. Um, so I'll go and select, for example, one of the tables in here just to show you what this looks like. So fact internet sales, clicking on OK, this will uh, bring that data inside Power Query Editor and um, like a preview of that data. So far, this is nothing about M scripting. This is just like normal Power Query uh, Editor. The Power Query has a really uh, powerful uh, graphical interface, which is what you see here. Um, I can go and do some transformations here. For example, I can say I don't want these few columns, I can get rid of them uh, by uh, things such as remove columns or I might say, well, I want to do some grouping based on product key. I can right click on this and then group by and then apply some kind of uh, aggregations on top of it as well, which gives me the count of rows. Um, these um, are transformations you can apply inside Power Query uh, easily using the graphical interface. But every action you do behind the scene generates a formula. You see that formula at the moment right in here. Let me also enable zooming tool so that you can see it uh, much better. Um, so at the moment, in no matter in which step I am, I always see that formula bar in here. This is part of that M scripting, but if you want to see the entire M script for a query, you can right click on that query and go to advanced editor, or you can go to the view tab and go to the advanced editor. And this is the place that you would see that M script. This is the foundation of a power query uh, transformation. Whatever you do in the graphical interface, it would be transformed into this uh, language called M. And this is the language that runs behind the scene. If you know how to work with this language, you can actually go and change it yourself. You can write the script yourself. Most of the time you don't need to, but learning that language gives you a lot of uh, benefits. For example, one of the things is that you can do some of the transformations um, in a much more efficient way if you know how to write them in M scripting rather than going and doing that in 
uh, in the graphical interface UI. I have some other videos about it. But this video, uh, we are going to talk about the structure of this language, some of the basic principles of this, how you can actually understand this script. So let's start from a blank query. What I will do is I will go ahead and create a new query, blank query. Blank query is just basically um, a query that has nothing, no value in it. It's just a blank text as a result. Uh, which is a good uh, query that gives you an um, understanding of this script would look like. So I'll go to the advanced editor for this uh, script, uh, which is a blank query. And what you'll see is the most basic Power Query script. This script is always cons um, consists of two sections. One is let section, another is in section. Uh, consider this like a programming block. Everything that you have in uh, your program like all the structures, definitions, um, the logic, the code, usually they are all in the let section. In, um, you can actually call it as out. So in is showing you what is the output of this uh, script. So in this uh, simple example, we have a variable called source. The value of that variable source is like a blank text. And then we are showing that as a result in this query, uh, which is that value of a variable source. So if I go ahead and change this value, for example, to something like hello world, this would also return a text showing hello world, right? Uh, I'll go back to that advanced editor. If we change this to uh, like a numeric value, something like, for example, uh, a number, then this would return a number and you see that data type ABC behind beside this now that would change to one to three. So Power Query is usually smart enough to understand the data type. You don't need to define the data type of the variable. This would be, um, this would be um, set based on the value you set for that, right? Uh, so this is like the variables and their definitions. What if you have multiple variables? And uh, one thing like before that, uh, what if, um, what if we talk about the fact that here is uh, case sensitive? So this means that if I have a variable called x and, sorry, not xml.tables, that is a function. Uh, this was too fast for me, oh, sorry. Yeah, when recording is happening at the same time, this happens a little bit fast, okay. So this IntelliSense is a good thing because it gives you an option to go and choose what you want. But let's say you haven't used that and you have used something like capital case X in here, lowercase x in the definition. This wouldn't work because Power Query is a case sensitive language. So this would give you an error saying that such thing such as X capital case can't be recognized because it doesn't exist. So make sure that everything you define is uh, considering that uh, case sensitivity. If you have multiple variables in your code, you can actually um, put a comma at the end of each line. So these are like programming languages. Your first line is finished. You are going to do the second line. And second line, let's say I would say y is equal to whatever x was plus 10, right? So this piece of code basically means that x is that variable the value, 234, and then y is 10 plus that. But the result of this still would show me x, which is 234, because that in section, which you should consider it as out, is giving me the, um, I didn't change that to lowercase, I think, uh, is giving me that uh, x value. It doesn't show me the y value. So this would still return 234 even though I have another uh, variable defined. So you can have a lot of variables defined, a lot of codes defined, but whatever you have in the output, which is in the in section, matters for the return value of your query. So now here, if I go and change it from x to y, this would show me uh, 234 plus 10, whatever it is, 244. And it also, the interesting part of it, is that it also shows me the steps on the right hand side, which would make it really uh, interesting to understand. You see the steps that we have here, the applied steps inside Power Query, these are matching to the lines that you have here. They are not always like that. This depends on if you have usually like the last step in the in a statement or in your output. So y is equivalent to y in here, x is equivalent to x over there. 
uh, and you can keep going like this. Your, var your variables can have values that are um, like um, string, date, uh, we call them literals. There are different literal values you can define within this environment and I have the details in my blog. The, the link is down in the description below. You want to check it. For example, if I have a D variable and that is a date value, I can use this date definition uh, structure saying that this is 220, uh, 2024 as a year, mine, a month as a nine and day as nine as well. And this would return a date value for me as a date data type. Now, the way that that date data type is presented depends on the locale of your machine and the locale setting of your Power BI or Power Query but it is defined as a date value. Uh, I'll go back to that advanced editor. I'll show you a few other things about this scripting before uh, we go into um, some more details. Uh, if your variables are like one word, it's easy to um, just define them like that. But if your variable definition is uh, including some special character and space is also considered as a special character, uh, one thing by the way, to note is that you don't need a comma. You need a comma for end of every line, but you don't need that for the line that is right before in. That line doesn't need that. So here I wouldn't need it, but because I'm adding another line, so I would add a comma over there as well. Uh, so let's say my variable name is some, something like this, my variable. And I would say this is equal to whatever y is multiply 10. Now this wouldn't work because as you see in the script here, it also shows me an error. This doesn't allow to define a variable like that. If you have a special characters in your variable name, the way we define it is that we put that variable name entirely inside double quote. And then we, we add a hashtag or pound key, whatever you call this um, character at the beginning of it. So put, it, put that inside double quote, put a um, hashtag in front of it. That is how we, you would define that variable and this is also the way that you would use that variable whenever you want to call it back. Uh, and the good thing about it is this IntelliSense actually helps you to find it as well. So, uh, so that wouldn't be the hard part. So that is, that is the way you would define it. Um, and then it would show that as an actual my variable here, you wouldn't see the double code or the pound key hashtag before that, right? So um, it would be quite clean in the view, but in the code you would have that. So one, one practice if you are doing a lot of things in the coding is to avoid having, for example, spaces because it might make your code looks a little bit strange with all of those special characters. One uh, other thing is that we have, in case you have like a special characters, like for example, I want to say my special variable and I want to put a special inside double quote. Now this would cause other issues because uh, double quote is considered the character to define this. Now, a special character like double quote, you can actually pass it using um, what we call as an escape character. So double quote itself is a, a space uh, a escape character, right? So what we'll need, we'll just need two double quote in here. And we also need two double quote at the end of it. The UI sometimes makes it a little bit uh, hard to set it up, but you see this also looks like this. And if I click on done, it would look like my special variable and you see those characters beside it, especially if you have those kind of characters. If you don't have it, then it is fine. So consider that that your, um, your escape character is double code. If you want to define a variable that has a special characters in it, put it in double code and add a hashtag at the beginning of it. If you want to define a comment in your uh, code, like comments are part of the code that wouldn't really execute. This would be just a definition. Uh, some, um, um, this would be just some like uh, uh, explanation. For example, here I would say defining a uh, variable with special character. Uh, and this would be anytime I come back here, that piece of the code wouldn't really execute. It would be something that I can see as some documentation for me or other developers to go and learn. Not only it is there, but also in the UI, you would see a little I beside this uh, step. And it would also show that explanation here. So that actually is a way that you would add a tooltip within uh, or description within your step. This tooltip or description can be one-liner like this uh, with 
to uh, backslash or it can be multiliner with backslash star and then start backslash and you put anything in between this is multi line comment right and same thing as still applies so this would give you that uh, explanation when it shows it here it wouldn't have that as a uh, as those inters and things like that although you can use inter characters and things like that so so far um you learned that how to define variables how to define commands how to end each line add a new line in power query we use functions quite a lot we use um, data types literals and functions you learned about literals and in terms of functions the way that, that we use the functions is really simple uh, like you define, uh, let's say, another variable, in this case, let's say Z or Z, um, um, and this would be whatever that date value I want, I have, I want to get the year out of it. Uh, when you want to access functions, when you start typing something, you'll see um, the functions related to that particular subject. For example, I want the year value from a date. So there is a date.year function, which you can actually use that. Uh, just make sure that um, the function that you are using has to be typed exactly like that. It is case sensitive. So usually the first letters are always uh, capital. The rest is lowercase. So date.year accepts a date time value. Uh, I'm going to pass a this date value that we have. Now that is date. It's not date time, but let's see if it is work. If it doesn't work, I'll convert that to a date time first and then pass it over here. Um, that is how you, we would pass it. Yeah, it worked. So that is how we would pass it and um, call a function and we would get a result. For every step that you have here, you'll see the formula of that step. And that formula is actually matching the line definition for that particular step. Right here, for example, you see z is date that year. And if I go and click on that z and the step of that, I'll see that date that year. So the basics and principles of MScript is not um, is not a rocket science. It's some uh, information like that, which can be quite helpful, especially if you are um, if you are going and learning about this language for the first time. But uh, but in terms of like some details about it later on, if you want to use this in real world scenarios, there are some other things you need to consider. Now, I'll, before ending this video, I'll go back to that. Um, to that uh, screen that I had before, I want to show you now that you learned about this, how an actual MS script looks like. I go to that script that we have created using UI. I'll go to advanced editor. And here now this script should not be that complicated to understand. Still parts of it is uh, something uh, you need to watch other videos to learn about it. But you see there is a let section. Exactly as we talked about, there is an in section. Uh, there are variables and each variable has definition. Source, for example, is a variable name. It uses a function, excel.workbook, that uses another function, file.contents, and then the value of mm, that path is passed over there. Or, for example, here we have uh, something like the fact internet sales underscore sheet as another function. Now, we'll talk about these structures in another video. Um, I'll talk about like record and list and how to navigate between them. But everything else is quite understandable. These are actually variable names only because they have like a space in their um, name. That is why they are in double quote with a hashtag at the beginning. And you see a lot of functions are called here. Table.transform column type table.promoted headers and usually the mm, whatever variable from the previous step you pass it as an input of this step for example here fact internet sales sheet and here that fact internet sales sheet is passed through that so that is how you would go through all of these steps uh, although it doesn't have to be necessarily like that when you build it through UI it becomes like that so in the future videos, I'm going to talk about some other aspects of M scripting, especially about the record, list, table, how to navigate between them. And we'll talk about some other functions in Power Query as well. And I already have some videos about Power Query functions and some advanced situations to use them as well. I hope you liked this video and uh, learned some about something about Power Query M scripting. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly, weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.